Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay guys, let's have a quick conversation. We know that the SEC have officially filed their appeal against uh, Ripple. So is this going to affect XRP in the next bull run? I'm sure this is a question that a lot of uh, you know content creators have been covering and it's something that I'm seeing quite a lot uh, at the moment. And um, Look, I want to give a bit more of an honest take in regards to this because I do think that some content creators are being like overly optimistic. Now, I just want to make sure I make this clear from the beginning. I'm not saying it's all doom and gloom. I, I like, let me just say from the get go, do I think that XRP will still perform in the bull run? Yes, I do. Okay. So let me just say that from the get go and get that out of the way. Um, however, I, I do think that some of the, um, some of the stuff that content creators are saying, in my opinion, I, I actually think it's a little bit, it's a little bit overly optimistic and I'll explain why. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, my whole thing with, with this, uh, lawsuit and one of the people who I've seen this mainly from me is, uh, Moon Lambo and Moon Lambo, I think is a really good XRP content creator. I really like his style. I like his, his beliefs. They're generally pretty much in line with mine. But, um, I think with this, with Moon Lambo, what he's saying i think it's factually correct but i think he's he's forgetting that we're in a speculative market and i think that's the issue that people are forgetting when they talk about this so let's get into it so moon lambo did a video very recently and um you know he was talking about will the etf be affected from the uh from the lawsuit right and basically Moon Lambo is saying, no, like the, the actual ETF shouldn't have no impact because, um, the ETF doesn't basically affect the status of XRP. XRP has legal clarity. So that won't be an issue. And okay. That's factually true. That is, that is factually true. So what he's basically saying is that the SEC won't reject the ETF on the basis that they're sending out an appeal to, uh, Ripple because they can't basically legally, they can't reject it on that basis. And that's fine. That's fine. So legally, the SEC can't reject the ETF on that basis. However, why do you think that they have to give that as their reason to reject the ETF? Right? Like, okay, let's just take the fact that they're appealing the lawsuit out of the equation. Do you not think, looking at this now, the fact that they have appealed, it shows you that they're not over the lawsuit, right? You know, because this is the thing, right? Let's just talk about optics. If the appeal had have passed, right? The appeal time had have passed and the SEC didn't file an appeal. What would that have come across as? It would have come across as, okay, the SEC have had enough, you know, they just want to move on from this now, you know, they're kind of done. Now, I still would have said that this doesn't necessarily mean that they were going to want to do Ripple any favors in regards to like approving an ETF while Gary Gensler's in office. But I do think that they had a much better chance because maybe they've just had enough now and they're just like, yeah, let's, let's just let it go and continue on. We're not going to do anything else against Ripple. Let's, let's just move on from this. Possibly. I still think it's unlikely, but possibly. But if they filed an appeal against Ripple, what does that look like optics wise? It looks like they've not had enough, right? It looks like they're still willing to drain their unlimited resources and just fight an unnecessary fight, right? That That's the way it comes across. So what do you think the likelihood is that they're going to accept an ETF for XRP, right? Like to me, the fact that they've sent in this appeal shows to me that like they're still as petty as they ever was. They, they don't really care about the ruling. You know, they still want to continue um, to fight the fight. You know, they're, they're not over it. So why would you then think they're going to want to um, you know, approve the ETF. So it, it, it doesn't have to be on the basis of, oh, we're doing an appeal. So, um, we're, we're doing an appeal. So, you know, we, we can't accept the ETF. No, I'm not saying that, but they, they could make any other excuse, right? They could just say for whatever reason, like, for example, when they had the first Bitcoin ETF, they kept rejecting it, right? And that's when eventually Grayscale took them to court because they're saying, you keep saying that we're not providing enough uh, information on the application, but you're not telling us how to fill out the application the way you want it. And so eventually they just sued them because it's like you just keep like making it difficult for us. Like you just don't want it to happen. And so that's the way I see this. Like it doesn't have to be, oh, you know, we're going to appeal the lawsuit. So we're going to reject it. No, they could just keep making up any silly old excuse 
to kick the can down the road. Like, look at just when we saw the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. Look how much there was a kick in the can down the road and just trying to keep asking for, like, extensions and delays and things like that. Like, how much delay tactics did they use during that lawsuit? And, the, the like, the whole arguments during the lawsuits were ridiculous. They didn't even make sense. So what would make us think that they're going to act any differently now? Right? Like, they clearly haven't learned their lesson because they're filing an appeal. So does this seem like people who have changed? They're still putting out lawsuits left, right, and center. You know, do these look like people who've learned their lesson? Not to me. So while, yes, I, I agree that, you know, they can not, like, reject the ETF based on the fact that they're doing the the appeal, they don't need to use that as their reasoning to reject the ETF. They could use any other reason. Now, could Bitwise sue um, the SEC because of this? Yeah, they could. But the problem is, how long is that going to take now, right? How long is it going to take to get that lawsuit done with a resolution, right? It could take a year, could maybe take longer, could take six months. But the fact of the matter is, it's not going to be done now. And so this is where I talk about like the implications of this appeal. People are saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. XRP has legal clarity. That is true, but I don't think we can say that it doesn't matter. I, I really don't think that's a, a, an accurate statement, in my opinion. It doesn't matter for retail holders. Yeah, because we can still, you know, now buy and hold XRP. And in the US, they've got access to XRP. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. But let's look at the other side, right? What about the institutions? What is XRP designed for? Institutions to use, right? And so for the people who um, are, are at institutions, you know, these big entities, are they going to feel comfortable right now being with XRP now that this lawsuit has been filed? I don't know, right? I don't know. I, I think like we've we've been told literally that when the first lawsuit came in, Ripple lost a partnership, a potential partnership. They had a potential partnership in the works and then the lawsuit came in and they lost that partnership. We've also seen that there were exchanges that delisted XRP, right? So we've seen the effects that this had. And while you can say, yes, we got out of it in the end, there was three years of damage to Ripple and XRP from this. Because that's three years of potential adoption that XRP could have had. Now, with this appeal, there could have been companies saying, hey, if they don't, you know, if the SEC don't file an appeal, after the deadline, we'll work with you. You know, we'll start using the technology. We want to get involved. But now they've seen the appeal and they might say, ah, okay, you know, let's leave it. We'll wait. And so this could affect partnerships that Ripple could have due to this appeal. Because again, there's still uncertainty. So yes, retail are fine. We're fine. But it's affecting the potential business opportunities that Ripple could provide that could ultimately give XRP more adoption and help with its value. So to say that it doesn't matter to me, I, I, I don't really agree with that. And people say that the appeal doesn't matter, but let's look back to when the appeal was announced, when we found out what happened to XRP's price. It went down, right? So it literally has impacted XRP because it's not the price down. So even saying that it hasn't impacted or it doesn't matter, it does. It's, it's, it's already knocked the price. People have already sold out of XRP. So it, it, we can already literally say it has impacted XRP. We can actually say that now for a fact because we've seen the price drop. And the thing is now, it's about speculation, right? Yes, let's say from a perspective of, okay, from a matter of law, retail are fine. You, you've got to understand that not everybody thinks from that deep of a perspective. All, all they will see is that there's a lawsuit hanging over Ripple's head with XRP. And that, that can be enough. Like, as we've saw with the price, the price dropped. Yes, from a perspective of retail, we're still fine. You know, we can still do whatever we're doing, but people still sold, right? So the, 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 point, the point that I'm making here is you still are going to lose some people who will probably still not want to transact with XRP or trade XRP because of this news. It, you know, like, th this is what I'll say. Do I think XRP will still have its moment in a ball run yes 
But the thing that I will say now is how high XRP gets may be stifled a little bit, right? So let's just say, for example, and, and okay, let's, let's even just go with a positive example. Let's say that XRP hits, let's say hits $20. Let's go with a really optimistic view. Let's say XRP hits $20, right? Even if it hits $20, what if, if that appeal hadn't have been, you know, um, put out, XRP could have hit $30, for example. So even in an optimistic scenario, you can still look at it and say, well, would XRP have gone way higher had the lawsuit not have been appealed? Do you see what I'm saying? So even from an optimistic point of view, you have to say, well, it could have maybe have gone higher. And on another side to that, you could think and say, well, if the um, lawsuit didn't get appealed, you know, people are saying that we're in a ball run right now. Could that have been the kick that XRP needed to go on its run? Right? Maybe if the um, October, you know, deadline of the past, maybe it could have gone on a run. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not so convinced of that just simply because I think Bitcoin leads the way first and that's what, what, what we need. Um, but who knows? Like, I, I've said this before. Um, at the end of the day, like, the people are saying we are in a bull run and I'm seeing some cryptos that are having really good runs. So maybe that could have been it. I, I, I'm skeptical of that, but who knows? You know, all I'm saying is who knows? There's a lot of questions now. There's a lot of what ifs. So in my opinion, do I think that XRP will still have a moment? Yeah, I do. I still think XRP is going to perform. Um, I don't think this is going to affect it to that degree. But do I think that this could affect like where it could have got to? I think that's possible because let's just say the appeal hadn't have got um, done, right? The SEC didn't appeal. It could have been that like within a week or a month's time, um, Ripple came out and said, hey, we've got, you know, two new big partnerships that we want to announce, you know, now we've got this all over and done with. And then they announced these two massive partnerships that could have been huge for XRP's price. Do you see what I'm saying? So we, we don't know the effect that this appeal dragging on for could have had from an institutional perspective. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. That, that's, that's cool. But you're forgetting that Ripple make products for institutions. And those are the guys who are being impacted right now because that's where the gray area still is. And so they might be like, eh, we're not really going to get involved with that now because the SEC have appealed. What if Ripple uh, lose the appeal and then, you know, the SEC come back and sue us at a later date? That could be a concern for them. So they might just say, Let, let's just let this play out and we'll just see how things go in the future. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that could have affected, again, future plans. So to me, like, I'm not going to say that this doesn't impact XRP. I, I think it does. And I think we've seen that already. Um, so in terms of factually, does it impact us? No, because we're retail holders and we still have access um, to XRP, especially in the US. Like that door is still open. So we are fine as retail holders. I agree with that. But in terms of the institutions who may wanted to have uh, adopted XRP, well, you know, we'll never know right that that's things that could have changed and, and maybe it wouldn't have changed anything you know maybe it wouldn't have but this is the thing we just don't know um but I, I do think there's probably institutions out there who will you know sit on the sidelines for longer now because of this appeal i, I think that's very possible so in, in my opinion I, I do think it's going to affect it to some degree but not to a degree where i'm concerned i still think xrp will have a time in the bull market i still think it will perform in my opinion uh but now i just wonder like has this potentially put a cap on how high it could have gone? Could it have maybe have done even better than whatever it potentially gets to? So that's my thoughts. But, you know, the main thing is, is that I still think XRP is going to perform. And that's what counts at the end of the day, because that that's the main concern, right? We don't want to go another ball run where XRP doesn't hit a new all-time high. And in my opinion, I do agree with Moon Lambo in the sense of saying, I don't think this should be any reason for XRP to not hit a new all-time high. Uh, that shouldn't affect it to that degree. I think it should still hit a new all-time high and go into a new level of price discovery. So we'll see how it goes, but that's my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching this. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell. Take care.